Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle rant. Today's topic, training. Yeah, I know you guys love training. You have a million different routines and splits. And the question invariably is which one works? And a lot of times I say they all do. But in the bottom line is that there are certain routines that are much more potent at building mass, freakiness, dense, grainy muscle. And look, I've over the years tried every routine. I think we all start off as over trainers in the beginning, right? We think the more we train, the better we're gonna get, the bigger we're gonna get. And then when, God forbid, we take anabolics and, and PEDs, we think, well, we could train forever because you're gonna recover better. But the truth is that, and Dorian Yates and Mike Mensur um, and uh, you know, guys of that generation really in the early 90s and mid 90s started to elucidate what was holding people back from making the gains uh, that they really wanted. And that was they weren't resting enough. They weren't allowing their bodies to recover. And that's something that was like a foreign body or a foreign concept to me because I came from an endurance background where when you run it, you run every single day. You never take a day off. Matter of fact, the more you can run, the, the faster you think you're gonna get. Um, I've made many mistakes as a runner, especially not tapering my training back prior to a, a race, and it hurt me at the race because I was burnt out. You know, so you know, I made a lot of overtraining mistakes as a runner, and so when I got into bodybuilding, I was doing the same thing. I was doing two and a half, three hour workouts at the gym, and I, I was making progress, but I certainly wasn't putting on mass. I wasn't getting a lot stronger every workout, and, and that was because I wasn't resting enough. And when I heard Dorian Yates uh, talk about it, and I heard Mike Mentzer write about it, I started saying, hey, this makes sense. You know, look at the size of, uh, of Dorian Yates. He's taking rest days. He's not training every body part every single week. So I started following more of a reduced, I guess you could say, volume, more higher intensity. In other words, training with the heavy weights I was before, but not doing as much volume. And it made sense because, hey, if I can stimulate the muscle and make it lift heavy weights, maximally and squeeze out as many reps as possible, forced reps using full range of motion, I should be able to theoretically get the same benefits in less exercise and less volume. And if I do that, I'm much more likely to be able to recover from the workouts, especially because I was uh, one of these guys that had a very fast metabolism and intended to overtrain really easily. Now I have a client who came up to me and, he, and I gave him one of my routines, which is basically one body part per day, you know, five days of training a week, two days off. That, that, that was the routine that the guys in the 90s, and a lot of guys today use as well. You're training each body part once a week, you get plenty of rest in there, but you're giving it 100% you know, when you're in the gym. High intensity, heavy weights, full range motion. And that's the key. So I gave that routine to him, and he went to, I think some trainer at the Las Vegas Athletic Club you know, said something to him like, oh, what are you doing? And he told him the routine, he's like, uh, who, who told you to do that? And he's like, well, my trainer, Dave Palumbo. And the guy's like, well, I don't know him. Which, right off the bat, look, I'm not like the most well-known guy in the industry, but most people know who I am, you know, in the bodybuilding world. If a guy doesn't know who I am, you know, he probably hasn't been doing what he's been doing that long. So he's like, well, I don't know who he, about him, or what, who he is or anything like that. But that, that's an old school routine. You know, new school is push-pull. You gotta do push-pull. Push-pull is like, first of all, push-pull is probably the oldest, one of the oldest techniques they used to use back in the day. Um, what it basically is, is all the pushing movements. So you, you're gonna do like your chest, your shoulders, triceps, and then all the pulling movements would be your back and biceps uh, type of stuff. So that routine obviously requires that you, you do a lot of exercises, okay, on the same day. If you're gonna do all push and then all pull. And they usually do, you know, sometimes they do each push-pull routine three times a week, which means you're training each body part two or three times a week. That's, that's serious overtraining. So I, I get a kick out of the fact that everyone tries to you know, rehash old stuff, pretend it's new stuff. It's like, you know, when I, when I was a kid, my dad had two tie racks in his, in his closet. One was the, the ties with the wide span, the other one with the thin ties. And I'm like, Dad, what is this? He's like, well, because they go in and out of style. And ten, for 10 years, they, everyone wants the wide ties, and then for 10 years, everyone wants the thin ties. And I think when I was in high school, it was at thin ties were in, you know? Guys would just wear them like with regular shirts with an open collar and stuff like that. And he, my father would give me these thin ties that he had from like 30 years ago. But they, you know, ties go in and out of style. Same thing with routines, okay? Training routines. People get used to the same ones. They get bored. So then some new guy comes along and he's like, well, I'll, 
I, and he reads a book from you know the, the 1960s, and he's like, oh, I'm going to grab this routine and make it my own. And they try to make it seem like it's a new revolutionary workout that's going to change the way you look overnight. There's no miracles, guys. You know, you got to find what works for your body. For people who are hard gainers, who have fast metabolisms, full range motion, heavy weights, lower volume works. Guys who tend to not overtrain so easily can get away with a little extra volume. They can do the volume. They can, they, you know, they can do slightly more reps and, and possibly get you know, just as good of gains out of it. I don't know. I just am of the belief that if you want to maximize mass in the, in the shortest period of time, you have to lift heavy, do less volume, and get enough rest so that you can recover from those workouts and build muscle. Because let's face it, remember, you're only building muscle on the days that you're not training. If you, I know guys that train seven days a week. If you train seven days a week, when are you building, repairing muscle? You're always breaking it down. It, it's silly. It's silly. Look, and I made that mistake. We all did it. We all did it. We all thought more is better. We thought if we, and then we thought if you take an anabolic, you, you should train even more because you can recover more so you can get bigger faster. It's not the case. Anabolics just enable you to recover better doing things the right way. Okay, anabol like growth hormone. People say, "Oh, you take GH, you can eat whatever you want." No, growth hormone enables you to diet harder while retaining muscle and get in better shape. It doesn't mean you can eat, you know, McDonald's every single meal of the day and you're just going to burn it up because you got GH. No, that's not how it works. Same thing with training. Find a routine that works for you, where you're consistently building muscle. If that, if you can find that routine, then that's what works for you. I tell people who might like be able to relate to what I'm telling them, lower volume, one body part per day, two days off per week. It doesn't have to be two days in a row. I used to do two days, three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. And I train my whole body over the course of, of those seven days. Now, you know, what I would do every once in a while is I would get a little stale on the same workout. So I would switch it around and maybe do some giant sets or some super sets or some forced reps, change the maybe the reverse the order of the way I train for the day. Uh, do a couple of, um, you know, uh, at, at the end of the workout, you know, a couple of different exercises that I never did. Once in a while we would incorporate clean and jerks, for instance, or upright rows, something I didn't do on a regular basis, just to shock the body a little bit. But by and far, the basics of what you do, the meat and potatoes, the, the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, the incline press, the shoulder presses, the bent over rows, those are the exercises that build mass. If you do too much on one particular day in the gym, you won't be able to, number one, give 100% to what you're doing, okay? Because you have so many sets and your muscles are so fatigued, and you mentally won't be able to give it 100% because you can only focus that intensely for so long. Dorian was so good at zeroing on what he was training because he wasn't doing a million sets. He was doing maybe four, five, six, seven sets when it all came down to it with warm-ups and, and working sets. And maybe he was doing three working sets the whole workout. But when he did it, it was like the most crazy thing you could ever watch because of the intensity level and the weight that he was moving. That's what builds muscles, my friend. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Rant.